I'm Norbert Gleich, MD. I'm the medical director and chief scientist uh, here at the Center for Human Reproduction. And this is David Barad, uh, my partner, and he is the head of clinical IVF and of research here at the Center for Human Reproduction and the senior scientist. And we want to talk to you today uh, about early egg retrievals. And the reason we are doing that is because this is uh, a very important aspect in in vitro fertilization cycles, which was fully developed at the Center for Human Reproduction. And except uh, at the Center for Human Reproduction, uh, is only used by a handful of IVF clinics around the world. Yeah, what's unique about um, the people that we take care of is they tend to be a little bit older than those at other other centers. A little bit more than a little bit. A lot older. Yes. Um, so we're taking care of people who basically have been told at other centers that they couldn't go through a cycle. With their own eggs. With their own eggs. Yeah. And so what we've noted in the years that we've been taking care of, and it's been almost eight, nine yeah. years yeah. since we started looking at this, you know, at most centers, people are pushed and pushed and pushed with their stimulations until they have fairly large follicles. I'd say on the average, 18, 20, 22 millimeters. And that's fine for somebody who's in their 20s or early 30s. But what we noted when we were pushing our older patients or patients who had some evidence of diminished ovarian reserve is that when we pushed that long, we were always getting well, you might call them rotten eggs. We, we, they're called, formally called atretic eggs. It just means the egg is too old um, to really be able to function well. And this egg doesn't make you a good, uh, a good uh, embryo. And so we asked the question, what can we do? It's not just a question of age. Is there something we can do to try to get better eggs? Yeah, that's exactly it. How, how it all started. And... Uh, one additional point um, that led us to this whole area was the fact that because we had such an older patient population, so just uh, so that, that you know what we're talking about, uh, in 2023, the median age of our patient population for the first time reached 44. 44, yeah. Uh, for the rest of IVF clinics in the U.S., the median age has for years been around 36 plus. Yeah. So it's a significant difference in age. There, there, there was a time when we were sort of skeptical, skeptical of anybody who was even 40 years old uh, to try right. to go through a cycle. Yeah. And, and now we look at 40 years old as being as young. young <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so what, what, what really led us to the discovery that we need to go away from fixed timing of when eggs are retrieved to a much more individualized approach uh, was a very simple question we asked. And we noticed in our outcome evaluations that our patients' pregnancy rates slightly decreased, as one would expect, with age uh, as they got older. And that happened until age 43, if you remember. And then after 43, boom, the waterfall came. And, and suddenly, patients had much poorer pregnancy rate. And we were trying to figure out what made age 43 such a breaking point. And we started some molecular investigations of the follicles between younger and older women. And we made the amazing discovery, which obviously since has been published years ago, that uh, so-called luteinizations of follicles, which we know that it happens before a, 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 a follicle ruptures and extrudes the egg during ovulation, happens earlier and earlier and earlier as women get older. So there are molecular signals you can see that indicate that luteinization is, is occurring, not just production of progesterone, but true molecular signals. And we saw there, there were smaller and smaller follicles that were giving us 
evidence of, of, of this uh, luteinization. And as people got older, it was showing up earlier and earlier. And, earlier. So and, and since we don't have any pharmacological means to prevent this earlier and earlier luteinization, we said the only way we can prevent uh, follicles from luteinizing, because that's what screws up uh, yeah. those eggs, uh, is to get earlier and earlier with our retrievals. No, no, let's be clear. There are medications you can use to prevent people from ovulating, but it doesn't appear to prevent this luteinization. So those people who are suppressing ovulation until they have 22 millimeter follicles, those follicles are often, in the older patients, often all, already luteinized and already giving you a, a less than, than quality egg. Yeah. Jokingly, we call this, we're getting hard-boiled eggs instead of soft-boiled eggs. Yeah. And once eggs are hard-boiled, they will never give you a pregnancy. And so uh, and that really has led to revolution to a degree where when we have visitors, which we very often have from all over the world, and they sit with us uh, through our patient visits or during our weekly conference, and they listen to our case discussions, they, they don't believe what they are hearing because while the rest of the world till today usually triggers uh, patients at somewhere between 18, 19, and 22, 23 millimeter lead follicle size, because our patients are relatively older, uh, we routinely uh, trigger as early as 10 to 12 millimeters. And we are getting mature eggs and better. Mature eggs from these uh, relatively small follicles. Yeah. And it's sort of a, a, a direct relationship. As they get older and older, we, we, tr we trigger earlier and earlier. So our oldest patient who achieved pregnancy, actually, we, she was triggered at 12, 12 millimeters. millimeters. Yeah. In those days, was that our, that was our lower limit. Today, we are down to 10 millimeter uh, in already in, in, in some patients. So this is a unique feature of our management amongst many. And it is also important uh, for everybody to understand uh, why we are individualizing patient care in that regard and not only in that regard. Because... Uh, frankly speaking, if you have a young patient with perfect ovarian reserve who produces lots of eggs and embryos, in today's IVF practice, that patient has an excellent chance of getting pregnant in, I would say, 99.9% .9 of IVF clinics. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? But the more complicated the patient becomes, uh, the the harder is it in general for them to to get pregnant, but especially in programs which follow a routine protocol for everybody. You can't, you can't use a one-size-fits-all. You can't be exactly. McDonald's. You have to be looking at it and, and be a little boutique you about you it. Have to, uh, you have to individualize. Uh, we call that precision medicine, like in other areas of medicine, and timing of ovulation trigger and retrieval timing is one of the most important things. And, and we're still actively refining this, looking for ways of more eloquently uh, timing that, uh, that trigger for individuals, but, uh, you know, we're making a lot of progress. Yeah. We, I mean, it is really very pleasing to see that we constantly learn new things. Uh, we used to stimulate those patients with high doses of uh, gonadotropins. We learned that the older a patient is, uh, gonadotropins are more and more toxic, and therefore we completely changed our stimulation. And so we are trying to get better and better in individualizing. I hope that helped. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.